Today is the crucial day for Wall Street. Stock investors are anticipating the outcome of the two-day policy meeting of the Federal Reserve. Apart from the policy update, investors will be searching for clues to further monetary policy. The market does not rule out hawkish notes in Powell's remarks at the press conference. Yesterday, the benchmark stock indexes closed with the modest gains. The Dow Jones closed 0.43% up at 34,212 points. The Nasdaq added 0.83% intraday. And the S&P 500 climbed by 0.69% to close at 4,369. The major stock indexes mainly traded in the green in the New York pre-market, but opened the session with a mixed dynamics. The intraday outlook for the S&P 500 depends on the Fed's policy decisions. A surprise rate hike by 25 basis points could push the S&P 500 down to 4,300 points. On the contrary, the Fed's dovish stance and signals could propel the index up to 4,410. On Tuesday, the Nasdaq and the S&P 500 reached the highest level in the last 14 months, in the light of the inflation report, which locked a slowdown in the consumer inflation in May. These increased expectations that the U.S. Fed might not raise interest rates on Wednesday. The U.S. Labor Department reported that the CPI locked a 0.1% uptick in May, on months following a 0.4% rise in April. The core CPI remained flat at 0.4%. The annual inflation rate accelerated by less than 4%, which proves fizzling inflation of energy and service prices. All in all, headline inflation fell by more than 50% since its peak. Nevertheless, it's still twice higher than the Fed's target level. Apart from the highly anticipated inflation report, investors digested corporate news. Nvidia shares jumped by 3.9%. It's the first chip maker to close the session with a market value of more than $1 trillion. The rise came after smaller competitor advanced micro devices provided an update on its AI strategy that failed to impress investors. AMD shares fell by 3.9%. US listed shares of Chinese companies rose after China's central bank cut its short term lending rate for the first time in 10 months. Alibaba Group added 1.9%, while GD.com climbed by 3.5%. Then sectoral S&P 500 indexes rose, led by the commodities increase by 2.33%, followed by 1.16% growth in the industrial sector. The Russell 2000 index jumped by 1.2% to a three months high. Shares of Intel grew by 2.5% after reports that the chip maker is in talks with a division of a soft bank to become an anchor investor in the IPO. The most traded stock in the S&P 500 was Tesla, which surged by 3.5%. Already on Wednesday, futures for the S&P 500 and the Nasdaq continued to rise, while the Dow steeped into the red zone. At the same time, the trading dynamics were sluggish ahead of the Fed's policy announcements. Even producer prices did not stir up the market. In a separate report, U.S. producer prices slipped by 0.3% in May on months following a 0.2% uptick in April. Analysts had projected a minor decline by 0.1%. The fresh PPI is the lowest since July 2022. In annual terms, producer prices increased by 1.1%, the lowest figure since December 2020.
The economic data cemented the likelihood that the U.S. Fed would put interest rates on a hold in the range of 5 to 5.25 percent for the first time since the central bank launched its historic aggressive monetary tightening in March 2022. Assuming the Fed hits uh, a pause button, perhaps the Fed's announcement could dispel expectations that there will be further move towards easing. Policymakers may be signaling further rate hikes um, as um, they will need time to assess how the economy is performing, whether the financial system remains stable and whether inflation continues to fizzle. The data since the last Fed meeting in early May has left a worst set of signals to read and plenty of room for discussion. The economy continues to generate strong monthly growth in jobs and wages, and the ratio of open jobs to the number of unemployed has expect, expanded recently, a sign that the labor market is still robust. Inflation has been declining slowly, with some aspects more resilient than expected. The closely watched PC price index excluding food and energy has not improved much this year and is up 4.7% year-on-year in April, more than double the Fed's 2% target. However, some price forecasts suggest that inflation could drop sharply in the coming months. The unemployment rate jumped significantly from a 3.4% to 3.7% in May. The annual bank lending growth rate is falling to zero, part of the slowdown in lending growth. Thus, Fed policymakers are expected to demonstrate both in their wording and uh, in their projections that one or possible two more quarter percentage point increases are required before the end of 2023. In any case, the intrigue will dispel today. In a corporate news, advanced micro devices shares rose by 1.7% in a pre market trading after reports emerged that Amazon Web Services was considering using the company's artificial intelligence chips. Amazon shares edged up by 0.2%. Activization Blizzard shares fell by 0.9% of the U.S. judge granted the Federal Trade Commission's request to temporarily block Microsoft's acquisition of the video game maker. Tesla shares gained 1.8% as the electric car maker raised the price of its Model Y cost slightly in the United States, and shares of a United Health Group launched by 4.3% after the company told an investor confidence that medical costs in the, its insurance division could be high. Unlike the stock market, there is a boost in the currency market. The US dollar is extending its weakness. Its index continued its fall intraday, having slipped by 0.52%, and the index is now trading at 102.80. The intraday carrier for the index is seen between 102.5 and 103.5 points. The US dollar is hovering at the multi week lows against the euro and the pound sterling because of the unexpectedly weak inflation data in the United States increased the bets on the Fed's post in a monetary tightening. The fresh produce price index only strengthened the belief in the post and intensified the fall of the dollar index. According to the Fed Watch tool, the chances that the Fed will raise rates by a quarter of a point fell to below 5% from about 21% a day earlier. The market is still expecting hawkish comments from a Powell who could revive faded dollar optimism in the short term. In the meantime, the dollar index is approaching its biggest two-week drop in two months, shedding 0.9% in that time as investors have become convinced that, unlike the Fed, other central banks will be forced to go further in the direction of tightening. The Reserve Bank of Australia and the Bank of Canada delivered surprise rate hikes last week, while the Bank of England's chances of a 50 basis point hike at the next week's meeting reached 20% of the shocking wage growth on Tuesday.
Also, following the Fed on a Thursday, the ECB may not only raise interest rates but try even harder to convey a hawkish message after inflation and economic growth data turned out to be softer. The Canadian dollar is the main winner of the greenback's pessimism. The USD card pays slipped by 0.22% intraday to trade at 1.3285. The instrument is likely to trade in the intraday carrier between 1.3250 and 1.3350. While everyone is awaiting for a pause from the Fed, the likelihood that the Bank of Canada will raise interest rates again in July to 5% is a growing. Last week, the Bank of Canada noted that monetary policy has not been restrictive enough and expressed concern that inflation may be stuck substantially above the 2% target. Inflation unexpectedly rose for the first time in 10 months uh, to 4.4% in May. Activity in the interest rate sensitive housing market has rebounded, suggesting that rates are still not high enough. The Looney finds support from a new set against inflation in Canada. Besides, the Canadian dollar is propped by a recovery in oil prices. On Tuesday, oil prices perked up because our PAC maintained its forecast for energy demand. And today, oil is supported by the pr prospect of a fat pose and a weaker dollar. Amid the such fundamentals, Brent futures crude rose by 1.4%, and now the benchmark is at trading at 75.7%. $34 per barrel. WTI futures appreciated again by 1.4% to trade at $70.40. As for the crypto market, most of the day it was focused on the new milestones in the confrontation between large cryptocurrency exchanges and the Security and Exchange Commission. The news, in a contrast to the previous days, was more optimistic and the market turned into a cautious growth. At the same time, the risk on mood was dampened and traders of the cryptocurrency market also kept the focus on the Fed. As a result, Bitcoin hovered around the level of 26,000, 8.5 and 0.6%. Most of the top altcoins also recovered, with the exception of a Ripple, which lost 2.3%. Ethereum, Solana, Binance, Litecoin and Cardano recovered by 0.4% and 3.2%. There is a little cause for optimism in the confrontation between the Binance cryptocurrency exchange and the Commission. A federal judge refused to issue a temporary rest, uh, restraining order to freeze trading platform assets in the United States. Meanwhile, the judge ordered Binance.us to submit a list of its business expenses to the court um, and ordered the parties to continue negotiations. The agreement should be reached by the end of a Thursday. In addition, Binance, responding to rumors of large-scale transactions, stated that it does not uh, sell either Bitcoin or its native token. There is a use in the confrontation between Coinbase and the regulator and the Securities and Exchange Commission. Said it has not yet made a decision on whether it will respond to Coinbase's petition to develop rules. So the Commission responded to a court order on a, how it's currently considering the exchange's petition, although officials believe that they will make a recommendation within 120 days. In addition to delaying the deadline, the Commission said that it's um, uh, enforcement auction against the cryptocurrency trading platform does not conflict with any decision to develop rules. The regulator said Coinbase filed a petition last summer. Amid this turbulent information, Bitcoin continued to stick to the course. The asset is still at the consolidation stage between 25,700 and 26,300 and the uh, presence of a positive news in the confrontation with the regulators as well as the dovish mood of the Fed 
can help the better to talk and approach the values of 26,700 and 27,000 to gain an alternative scenario looks like a decline to $25,000. Thank you for watching. We are closely monitor the markets and provide you with the up-to-date financial information and analysis. We are waiting for your questions and comments. Subscribe to our channel and see you online tomorrow.